<clears throat> hey everybody, welcome. Uh, I'm Ed Friedman. Welcome to our first um, evening winter speaker series of the 2022-2023 season, our 26th season, believe it or not, doing the uh, the series. And our second or two and a half one, I can't remember, uh, one doing Zoom. Um, so which is has its pluses and minuses, but I think overall it's a good thing. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> a couple of things before I kind of run through our intro. Um, if you have questions during the course of the uh, presentation, if you could put them in the chat, which is somewhere down on a toolbar on your screen, hopefully. And then um, Martha or Martin will kind of curate those at the end. Um, we'll try and leave five, 10 minutes at the end for that. Um, some of you probably, most of you probably know by messing around with the little three little buttons up on your screen by your name, I think you can adjust the size of the screen and how big the slides are and whatnot. And we are recording this and hopefully within a, a couple of few days of the of today, we will have the recording available up on our website on our YouTube channel. So I, I want to um, thank Martin McDonough who's on and Martha Spies for helping out on the technical side of this. Couldn't do it without them. And, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and run through some slides about who we are, and then I'll introduce our speaker, Pat Elder, and we'll turn it over to him. So thanks again for coming. Everyone is, is muted. And then as, as you have questions, um, at the end, um, Martin will be able to unmute you, and uh, we can go from there. So thank you. So let's see if we can change slides. I think I have to, what do I have to do to do this? Um, hit my mouse, I think. Yeah. So we are friends of Mary Meany Bay. Uh, I didn't actually get a good look at who's here. Um, but for those of you that don't know, we do this great mix, a holistic mix of research, advocacy, land conservation, and education. And that's a really unique um, um, kind of a combination for really most conservation organizations in the country and certainly in Maine. So are we seeing the research slide now, hopefully, everybody? Someone tell me, Martin? Or yes, Martin? research. Okay, great. So it's just some, some examples of some research we've done over the years. Some of it's been really cutting edge, the circulation study of the Bay, which you can actually see on the website. You can see um, um, ah, my brain. Um, animated, uh, you know, buoys moving around in the bay and the, and the, and the rivers. Um, the caged mussels for biomonitoring was uh, first of its kind here. Uh, aerial vegetation over time goes back to 1956, aerial vegetation, land use changes. So <clears throat> a bunch of digs over the years. Um, doing work on shad right now, I'll have a presentation on that later on in the season. Uh, hard to pour advocacy, we have a, uh, we just uh, had the Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court, say no to hearing a lawsuit against CMP, which was not unexpected. Um, involved in a smart meter uh, appeal at the BEP, and we're appealing to the Board of Environmental Protection uh, uh, a mess up on the Androscoggin. Many of you know that we, we at least thought we got this upgraded on the lower river, but um, uh, due to a kind of a quirk in, in the laws, um, the DEP just licensed the middle dam in that section for class C, or they just uh, um, gave them approval to go to class C for the next 40 years instead of class B. So we're fighting that. And we've got some colleagues doing it with us. Education, that's taken a hit with COVID, but we've still had a, a great, this is part of it, so this is good. Um, and we've done some work with a couple of the schools in person last year um, with cooperation with PT Theater out of Massachusetts. A uh, program about pollinators. It was really well received. It was outside in October, 70 degrees. It was awesome. And we're working on with Bowdoin School, Bowdoin, uh, Bowdoin Elementary School now on a program about the history of their town and natural history of their town. So it's we're sort of doing some work on a limited basis on that right now. Over 1,300 acres of you know protected land around the bay, thanks to us, mostly focuses on wildlife habitat. 
And we just last week finished a uh, 30 acre easement on the bay, 1200 uh, feet uh, on the uh, wetland. And that started like in, I don't know, 2014 maybe. So some of these things take quite a while. And if you, if you or your friends have missed the program or you want to see some old shows, this is a shot of the homepage. And you can see down on the right side, go down to education and you'll see some links there for videos, speaker series or archives. We, we, video, we have recorded, uh, I don't know, I think back to 2010. Beyond that, um, there's just sort of some lists. And this is our series for the season here. So I'll point out, I mentioned Shad, that's gonna be our next next one. Shad and, and uh, getting trying to get up through Brunswick and now that's a problem. Um, and this is gonna be a really good episode one, Mauricio, super, super National Geographic quality um, uh, underwater cinematographer working on a, a film for Maine. And uh, yeah, where the wild things were, uh, Will Stoltzenberg, well-known author, um, and I'll be doing a discussion with him. And then I think Vance Stevenson is on the call for kind of getting that one going. Yeah, and they're all good. So I'll, I'll get into them as we, as we come along during the season, but I hope you can all join us. So Pat Elder and uh, PFAS. Um, Pat's the director of Military Poisons. They're an organization <clears throat> drawing public attention to the role played by the military in contaminating our environment and threatening our health, no shortage there. Um, Pat's focus has been on per and polyfluoroalkyl al alkyl substances, aka PFAS, easier to say for me, certainly. <laughs> He's been working with groups in, in various states uh, to test surface waters flowing out of military bases for PFAS. And he's also worked at uh, shellfish and, and uh, seafood testing. So he's going to address the strong correlations between the levels of carcinogens in the water and those found in seafood. And uh, a reminder to just, you know, you can join us the second Wednesday of each month for these programs. So with that, I will turn this over to Pat. Pat took it over himself. So there you are, Pat. Uh, uh, it it I happened I automatically. <laughs> well, I think I need, I need to stop sharing. I, I don't know if um, if I've totally done that or not. Uh, I think so. But someone someone did that for me, I guess. Yeah. All right. So it, I will share my screen. And hopefully you all can see the lovely seafood platter. Can you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's great. Can we, can well, we, is it safe to dig in or not, Pat? No, I, I, don't, I don't think it is. Um, although um, very few are paying attention. I mean, it's tough. I mean, especially for me down here in this little skinny um, stretch of land in Southern Maryland where my folks have been here for 10 generations and, uh, you know, they've, they've made a living on the, the oyster particularly. And, you know, and uh, so I don't think we can eat it anymore. But there are three points that I'd like to make. Um, and uh, that's, these are my first three slides. First, I think there's too much emphasis on PFAS levels in, in drinking water and too little uh, focus on PFAS exposure from food, particularly seafood. So that, that's the thrust of my argument there. And I think also, um, that, uh, um, you know, there's a great threat to the uh, health of the unborn. Um, and thirdly, the military has got to take responsibility for poisoning Maine's aquifers, surface water, aquatic life, wildlife, soil, and air with PFAS. So I think I'd start here, um, Ed kind of, uh, he looked through these slides and suggested that maybe we put um, this slide up top. It's actually produced by the European Environmental Agency. They're a lot more proactive on PFAS um, than we are in the United States. And several of these lines here that are dark lines, uh, you know, that are that are dotted lines might, might actually be dark lines today. I think PFAS is, um, it, it's still really not understood by the public but this is a deadly chemical. Uh, and as we've seen with the EPA recently, um, when they lowered their um, lifetime health advisory from 70 parts per trillion to 0.02 part per trillion, 
for PFOS in drinking water, we got a clue that finally the federal government realizes how dangerous these chemicals are. I mean, look at it, thyroid, cholesterol, breast, liver, kidney, I mean, you name it. So it's, 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 it's a brave new world. But more to the point with Maine. Now a brook trout had a concentration of 1,080,000 parts per trillion of PFOS in a stream near Loring Air Force Base where firefighting foams like those in Brunswick were carelessly dumped for years. The base closed in 1994. Just, just hold that thought. And also, I, you know, I wanna make sure you understand that PFOS um, is just one of, gosh, 12,000 different varieties of PFAS. So um, this is uh, an eight carbon chain molecule that um, was used extensively for years and years. Darn it, it just takes forever to break down. And so, uh, so even though it's been phased out of, 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 of use, um, it's still um, abundant in the environment. So keep that thought in mind. You got 1,080,000 parts per trillion of PFOS in a fish in Maine. And you know how good that is. <laughs> I mean, ask Martha Stewart. My God. Uh, and I don't know how many times I've taken uh, perch, flounder, trout, rock, you name it. The Chesapeake Bay is prolific. And uh, I'd much rather live down here than up there in Maine. It's just not as bad in the winter. But got plenty of fish and seafood and crabs and darn it, the crabs are better than the oysters or lobsters anyway, right? Although they're both pretty terribly contaminated. So, so this is what I'm talking about. And let me just read this, okay? So the filet of trout contains a concentration of 1,080,000 parts per trillion. And that's the same as 1,080 nanograms per gram. Now, it's hard with these different measures on uh, units of measurement, but you know, later in the presentation, I'll try to stick mostly to the powers, uh, you know, parts per trillion. But anyhow, 1,080 nanograms per gram times 227 grams, which is eight ounces, which is a standard portion for fish equals 245,100 nanograms of PFOS. So just, just kind of keep in mind, you know, the difference between a dose and a concentration. So we're talking about 245,000 nanograms of PFOS in one fish, one serving of fish. Now the EPA's lifetime health advisory, you know, for PFOS in drinking water is based on the exposure of a 70 kilogram adult consuming, uh, you know, the water, and it creates a dose uh, of 0.04 nanograms of PFOS. So, so, so the EPA wants us to limit PFOS in drinking water to 0.04 nanograms a day. Well, they're okay with us consuming the brook trout with 245,160 nan nanograms of the carcinogens. You know, the fish exceeds the EPA limit 6.13 times over. And I know that was a little painful, but this is the thrust of my message. No one's talking about the fish. And in Maryland, you wouldn't believe it. I think the last time I counted uh, news items, we had 382 mentions of PFAS in water and nine for fish. It, it, it's, it's what the mainstream media has grabbed onto. So we've got 13 states now that have enacted or are following weak PFOS guidelines um, or advisories. So that means uh, what, 37, 36 states, if you add in Maine, uh, just, you know, are out to lunch. So Maine has the strongest advisory in the country. Yeah, Alabama has the weakest, while the EPA is delinquent, okay? 
And again, you know, apologies for all of the different um, units, but nanograms per gram is a thousand parts per trillion. So 15 nanograms per gram means 15,000 parts per trillion. So look at Alabama on the left and look at Maine on the right. You know, and, and, and look, look at the, the meals per month for Alabama. So Alabama says, hey man, it's okay. You can, you can eat fish with concentrations uh, totaling 800,000 parts per trillion. And Maine says 15 thousand parts per trillion. So even with the strongest advisory in the country, Maine allows alarming concentrations of PFOS. I mean, this is the scary scenario. So if you figure, you know, 15 nanograms per gram in a month, that means during the first trimester, you know, uh, a pregnant woman in Maine you know, may consume 45 nanograms per gram of PFOS. Of course, you know, has anyone ever seen a sign that says don't eat the fish because of PFOS? Um, you know, I guess it's one thing to have a fish advisory, but, uh, uh, you know, it's another thing to actually enforce it. No, down here in Maryland, we have one fish advisory for one creek. It flows out of Andrews Air Force Base. I tested the water flowing out of that creek and found 2,900 parts per trillion. And it got the state of Maryland to finally, you know, it was a four year, you know, uh, uh, program uh, to test the water. And they found the water to have 3,100 parts per trillion. So it kind of validated our testing uh, procedures. But anyway, they did put a, um, uh, a, an advisory in effect, basically saying it's okay to eat up to 300,000 parts per trillion um, monthly. And um, it's really shameless. But Maine is much more on the ball than Maryland. And I like the motto, you know, Dorigo, and it means to lead. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so, so Maine can do even more, I think. Um, so let's just look at it. 45 nanograms per gram, do the math, you got 10,215 nanograms of PFOS uh, in a serving. And um, so the EPA says that a pregnant woman uh, should limit PFOS and drink of water to uh, 3.6 nanograms for the first trimester, or I guess for all three trimesters. So meanwhile, the state of Maryland says, of Maine says it's okay for pregnant women to consume 10,215 nanograms. So if you go 215, 10,215 divided by 3.6, it's, it's a factor of over 2,800. So, so Maine's allowable fish exceeds the water by a factor greater than 2,800? Really? So my question is, is, can the state prove the safety of this chemical at this level? I mean, you know, can they prove it during the first three months of, of pregnancy? Can, 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 can we get somebody, you know, with PhD or a, a medical doctor speaking for the state of man to say, yep, yeah, it's fine. Hey, nothing's going to happen. You, don't worry. Be happy. We, we've we got this proven. Here's, here, here's our proof. And this certainly isn't the case in the state of Maryland. And then you look at the Great Lakes Consortium uh, and um, they basically set uh, fish consumption advisories. And in this case for PFOS, uh, for lots of states like Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, um, they look to the Great Lakes Consortium. Um, some of these states have actually developed some of their own, but look at it. They're saying it's okay to consume 200,000 parts per trillion a month. It's not. Now, I think there's a lot to be learned uh, from the state of Michigan. Three years ago, they tested 2,841 fish, and the average fish had 80,000 parts per trillion. Come on. 
Michigan mandates that water service providers have to keep PFOS under 16. And as we've seen, the EPA says 0.02. The average fish has a PFOS concentration that's 4 million times greater. Good God. I mean, a fish near Wordsmith Air Force Base had 10 million parts per trillion in its fillet. I mean, it was caught next to the burn pit. And, you know, it's, we, we see the same thing in Brunswick, not to these levels. We haven't really had any fish testing, but we can assume that you've got big problems. Anyway, 500 million times over the EPA advisory for a fish? And, 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 you think everybody? You think that that we could get CNN or, or we could get M MSNBC to cover it, but I have been successful in getting um, you know Fox News uh, and, and and Spotlight on America uh, at least to to begin to run some of these military poison stories. It's the right. It's not the left. The left's not following this. I mean, they're not covering it. I mean, it might have something to do with, you know, a Democrat in the off, in the, in, in, in the Oval Office. I, I don't know how these things work, but I'm not too quick anymore to denigrate Fox News. Uh, if, if a couple hundred of their affiliates will run stories regarding contamination coming from military bases, while, you know, Rachel Maddow won't. So, so I took, um, uh, data from, uh, you know, Michigan, that's EGLE, and darned if I can remember what it stands for, um, and, and, and from the EPA, um, and then various states, and then, uh, you know, it's quite a, quite a database, um, and I have um, nearly 3,000 fish uh, represented on that database, so these are the top ones, and it's interesting because, you know, these are all predators, um, and, and so that's just something to be mindful of. You know, it's not so much the bottom feeders. And so when you compare, you know, some of these species with say the crabs and the oysters and the lobsters, uh, there is a factor of 10, 100,000 in play. It's not to say that the mussels aren't contaminated. The mussels that um, I know David has found are somewhere close to 12,000 parts per trillion for total PF. AS. So, I mean, we have a problem. You don't want to eat that either. But uh, I think my point here is that predator fish are a lot more um, concentrated with the carcinogens. <clears throat> so this is kind of a break in my presentation where I switch gears here, talk about human health. Um, so we know that PFAS um, is passed through the umbilical cord and the placenta. And we also know that, of course, it's passed through the breast milk. There was a study out of um, Massachusetts that tracked 45 women and, um, you know, the highest uh, in breast milk uh, found um, PFOA concentrations 40,000 times over what the EPA says is safe in water. Oh, my God. What are we doing? Um, and so, but when you talk about it in public, um, you get derision. At least I have in Maryland. Uh, no one wants to hear this. No one wants to hear it. And it's just easier to, to attack the messenger. Hey, you, hate America. you hate America. You, know, you hate the military. So, you know, you, you're, you're, you're making it up. So PFOS contributes to the disruption of thyroid hormone levels during pregnancy. And this causes abnormalities in the developing fetus. In children, PFOS is linked to hyperactive, impulsive, obsession, compulsion, internalizing problems like depression, anxiety, social anxiety, somatic complaints, ADHD, immunosuppression with diminished childhood antibody response to vaccination and increased risks of childhood infectious diseases and infections. It's what we're dealing with here. I'll just... I want you to read this. So I'll just try not to talk for like 30 seconds. Yeah. 
you know, it's like when I'm watching Major League Baseball. <laughs> Come on, man. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, I just, I'm actually upset with the National Academies of Sciences. And although I played a, played a large role uh, over the course of a year uh, in various town halls, um, their finished report basically said um, that they did not uh, recommend uh, that municipalities and states uh, tell consumers to stay away from fish um, that are locally caught because, and this is their rationale, they'll just buy something else that's liable to have PFAS in it. That's from the National Academies of Sciences. So the Navy, switch gears again. They made a mess of things, okay? Uh, they've made a mess of things in overhead suppression systems with degreasing, with crown plating, with wire coating, all of these industrial activities eventually, re, you know, re, just result in, in, in these um, chemicals being released to the environment. Sometimes uh, these suppression systems and hangers went off, um, uh, you know, accidentally and thousands of gallons went into the streams. Uh, and, and you can ask Ed and Martha about what they've been able to find uh, by examining these streams for PFAS today. Um, and, and sometimes the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the hangers will direct the flow from the storm drains uh, into the um, sanitary sewer system. Still, even then, the, um, you know, the effluent goes into the rivers and the sludge um, is spread elsewhere. So it's a good question for you. Um, where is the sludge heading? You know, where is it being spread? Because this area here is lethal. And if you're taking the sludge from this area and you're spreading it on agricultural fields, then you can bet um, that the groundwater is contaminated and whatever agricultural prop crops are, are produced are, are also poisonous. So, so uh, friends of Mary Meeting Bay sampled PFAS entering the river uh, and they found 127 parts per trillion for PFOS and 406 parts per trillion for, for six to two FTS. Man, um, concentrations of PFAS pouring into the river totaled 922 parts per trillion. You know, just, just hold the thought on just the PFAS or PFOS. So, um, so you have 127 parts per trillion. So the state of, of Minnesota has done tremendous work. And they say with some species of fish, you can multiply the ambient water levels for PFOS times 7,000, anywhere between 1,000 to 7,000, but for some species of fish by 7,000. And that's why we have some fish with millions of parts per trillion of PFOS. It bioaccumulates. And so this is a lethal multiplication for humanity. And there's Ed doing his thing. So what, the base closed in 2011, right? And, uh, but it looks like, it looks like uh, the new tenants are also contaminating your environment. So, so back in 2018, the main department of the environmental protection sampled PFOS and 62 FTS concentrations. The 2021 data by FOMB shows a 30% decrease in surface water PFOS. This is the same spot, I believe. You can correct me later, um, Ed, but the same spot that was tested by uh, Maine um, DEP. Uh, but Ed found, and Martha, a 230% increase in, in another chemical that is used currently in industrial procedures. So that makes you think that um, this is ongoing. I just have to say that Brunswick Landing is likely contaminating, contaminating the Androscoggin uh, with PFAS. And it's uh, main center for innovation, 2 million square feet. Now, I think the Navy's hiding documents from us, not just in Maine, but, you know, 
in states across the country. So at one point, uh, there was a uh, minutes to the Restoration Advisory Board for the July 21st meeting. Uh, and uh, I have a copy of it and I have it in some slides coming up. And that document said the surface waters on the old base contained 8,600 parts per trillion. It says PFOS, PFOA. They don't distinguish between the two, but my guess would be that it would be about 90% to 95% PFOS. So, so, but what I've seen is that since June 15th, when the EPA lowered its advisory, um, documents have been disappearing from Navy um, websites nationwide. So you know, this document says that, um, that on the base, you have um, 8.6 uh, micrograms per liter, which is 8,600 parts per trillion. I think this is what they didn't want you to see uh, because it's not on their list anymore. And I think this, this is outrageous too. Look up top. The Navy says just nine of the 31 adjacent property owners consented to have their water tested for the deadly carcinogens. I, I, I have a hard time with this. So, so especially in the Northern off base area, and, and there are more than eight, the, these chemicals can travel a long way. So, so people get a letter from the Navy that says, hey, we think that there's carcinogenic uh, chemicals in your water. Do you want us to test it? And people in Maine say, no, nah, no, we're not interested in that. So, so if you go to the Navy's website, the NAVFAC website, and you look for the Restoration Advisory Board community meeting minutes, November 17th is the only thing that pops up. They don't have the July meeting. Now, one kind of final point I wanna make that no one seems to be paying much attention to, um, which is that, you know, the Navy uh, and the, um, the military generally is weaning itself from the carcinogenic firefighting foam. Thank God. I mean, it took a Herculean effort from a lot of us. And, uh, but, but, but they are replacing all of these foams uh, with uh, non-fluorine foams or 3F foams, fluorine-free foams. Thank God. But the contamination is ongoing at Navy bases across the country and, and Air Force bases too. And so what happens is, you know, after a day's work of degreasing, or after a day's work of, of chrome plating where, you know, they use the PFAS as a suppressant, uh, you know, of the hexavalent chromium, um, you know, the, the, the stuff winds up in, in the sewer drain. So this is an important graphic, okay? So this was from last year, and um, it was from Maryland uh, near me, uh, Chesapeake um, Bay, Chesapeake Beach, the Naval Research Laboratory, Chesapeake Bay Detachment. It's only 35 miles from Washington. So the red X is the sewer plant, okay? Um, and um, so it's the location of the wastewater treatment plant on the base. So, so the stream goes through the base and the Navy is assuring us we don't use the firefighting foams anymore with PFAS. Relax, it's all going away. And they published this 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 graphic and I captured it and when the stream passes by um you know the outfall from the wastewater treatment plant PFO, PFOS levels increase eightfold this is significant not just here in Maryland but everywhere So the FDA and the National Academies of Sciences say the food supply is among the safest in the world and the available scientific evidence does not support avoiding particular foods because of concerns regarding PFAS exposure. God, 
I mean, compare this to EFSA, you know, the, the European Food Safety Authority. And here you go. They're saying up to 86% of the PFAS in our bodies comes from food, especially seafood. Now, the municipal water in, in the case of Brunswick, I mean, I looked at the, the last annual report I was able to find, and it looked like there is no PFAS in the drinking water. And I believe that because it's pretty much the case where I live. I mean, we have granulated, uh, you know, um, carbon filters and darn it, you know, the technology's there. Um, you can take a city like Brunswick, run the water that is full of PFAS through these filter systems and present the public with pretty much PFAS clear water. So it's not the water as much as it is the fish. Here's another point that people just aren't talking about, which I, I think, and, and I'm working on a project with a woman from Michigan with uh, Sierra Club. I think dust is really important now. Um, so, so what happens is, is PFAS saturates the, the banks of your river. And when the water levels subside, the sun bakes the land, the, the, the wind lifts the carcinogens into the air, and, and, and they settle in our lungs, in our homes. And so, and so sweeping and vacuuming may be hazardous to your health. I mean, you could see how easy it would be to, to say, hey, hey, pal, you're nuts. <laughs> but we may be becoming a Swiffer nation, huh? Look at the numbers. So in Martinsburg, West Virginia, um, you know, the um, Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry teamed up with the CDC uh, at Shepherd Field um, Air National Guard Base. And um, people let them in the homes. Now, some of, these, some of these streams actually flow into residential neighborhoods, streams that flow out of the base. And so, you know, the water recedes and the um, PFOS uh, in this instance becomes airborne. And the water, uh, surface water on the base is 8,100 parts per trillion. So that's like burn pit, you know, near the runway. Um, and you have dust in the homes off base, 13 million, 13.9 million parts per trillion. That means it becomes, you know, aerosol. Be careful when you, when you vacuum and be careful when you change the vacuum bag because you, you may have carcinogenic dust in the vacuum. Um, and so look at Brunswick. I mean, it's, it's, it's a real, it's amazing how similar they are, but it, it's, it's within the realm, you know, uh, for Navy bases and, and Air Force bases I've, I've, I've seen. But we don't know how much dust is in your homes because because the, um, neither the state government or the federal government's on it. So I thought this was a great graphic by uh, Molly Maps in Portland. Man, look at it. You, know, you get landfills, active landfills, closed landfills, military bases, paper mills, farms with the sludge, firefighting foam, you know, sports facilities with their turf, manufacturing, trash incineration. Man, this is great. So, uh, of course, your wastewater treatment plant. And uh, that's my final slide here. Um, you know, we, we need to work with the Navy here um, and we need to get some sense into them. And we need to tell them um, that, that their actions are, are, are poisoning us and, and they, they've got to clean it up and they've got to stop the contamination. Well, of course, you know, this is not an active base you're dealing with, but these bases down here in Maryland uh, are very active and the Chesapeake Bay is highly contaminated. Um, so. But people love it. And when they light fires like this here, you actually have some uh, fighters that go upside down through the, through the, um, the cloud of, of, of fire and smoke. So, so that's all I got, folks. So do I have to press buttons there, Martin? What do I have to do? Stop sharing. You, you, can, just, you can just leave it. Um, I got it. <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> well, thank you, Pat. That was great. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just say a, a few things here, and then we'll turn it over to folks if, if you've got questions. Um, but, but I, I, I was going to ask about other sources, and you, you stressed the military. But the, the next to last slide, 
showed showed a number of other sources. Um, and actually, I think a lot of the early publicity on this came out of 3M in Minnesota um, because of the stuff that they that they make there. Um, I will say in Brunswick around the dust issue that all the water or the, the major water to the north and south of the base is tidal. So we probably actually don't get precipitate, you know, as things dry up and water goes down, we're getting, we're getting washed. I don't know if it's washing away or not, but we're getting a high tide twice a day. Um, it was a little bit different here. And I'll say around fish advisories that we went for years battling with Andy Smith, who's our state toxicologist, over the mercury stuff and dioxin and PCB advisories. And his argument was always that, well, you know, it's such a tough balance because fish is good for you, you know? So, you gotta, so that, that was what he used to explain his reticence to actually um, be more uh, aggressive on his uh, fish posting. And I don't know if that's what other toxicologists say, or that's why the EPA, you know, is reticent. Uh, it is interesting to see the difference between EPA and, and the European agency, though. Um, and then uh, I'll just, I'm not quite sure on your slide with the sampling, um, with the comparison with the DEP and then with our sampling later. Um, if, if the slide was meant to imply that where I was sampling there in the muddy stream mouth was the same as an earlier site. That's not the case to my knowledge. If it meant that the source of that, which was up in the ponds was the same, yes. So I don't remember which, you know, measurements for which, but I'll throw that out. There were, there were several sites that Martha and I have sampled on, on the old base versus where that slide was of me sampling where the creek comes into the Androscoggin. And, none of those creek mouths were really sampled by the department or the Navy, as far as I could tell. <clears throat> so anyway, so if, if folks have questions, <clears throat> uh, I don't know uh, if there are any in the chat. <clears throat> I don't see any little... Phil has his hand raised. Okay, I don't see it in the chat, but if someone yeah. has a... Oh, he, he raised his hand and then left. Maybe that's was a goodbye, <laughs> or he had to do something. So I don't see anything in the chat um, area. Okay. Well, if there. But David, uh, David Page, uh, I, I see you there, and I just want to applaud your uh, your work on on the muscles, and uh, um, I, I I think it's brilliant work, and I think we need more of that in the state. And I think we need to test the uh, the lobsters as well, uh, but I'm I'm a safe distance away, <laughs> so I could say that. Uh, but there's work to be done. Although my hunch is that, I mean, I tested the crab uh, in Chesapeake, and um, it's about six thousand parts per trillion uh, PFOS in the crabs, and um, two thousand one hundred parts per trillion in the oysters. And I know you're. Heck, I'm trying to remember, David. I think the last one you did was 12,000 overall and maybe around 7,000 for PFOS. But that, that's what I'm saying. You know, those are roughly the numbers for those creepy crawling things um, at the bottom. Are you there? In the disaster area of my, uh, of my desk, you know, <clears throat> um, and I'm not some disembodied face. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Um, sorry, guys. Don't mean to. <sighs> the um, first of all, you know, I, I know you guys are strapped for time, so thanks for the. Uh, you're right about the numbers. When we did the muscle stuff, it was to basically test the Navy statement that there was no PFAS of any kind going off base into um, Harpsal Sound, and uh, and that's certainly not true. Um, and uh, they acknowledged that, you know, with their castor oil smile after our results uh, came out, uh, they weren't happy, DEP wasn't happy, and EPA wasn't happy. Um, and I won't bore you with, you know, the various Waste uh, Baxi um, kind of 
got you know discipline for that but um the muscles that we used uh the rib muscles were sentinel organisms not organisms that are consumed uh normally um and and for and, and it's important you know, and certainly uh, NOAA uh, uh, and EPA use uh, muscles of various kinds, including rib muscles, as canaries in the coal mine because they filter water and and, and absorb pollutants from them, uh, whether people eat them or not. Um, and so uh, there's this fixation on, you know, sort of species humans eat. Um, whether people actually eat any of these fish or mussels from Hartsville Cove or anywhere else is another story. Um, I do want to just say one quick thing, and that is that the one thing you didn't touch on, uh, Pat, which is to me very important, is are these bases that are at various stages of the BRAC process where, uh, for example, you know, the Brunswick Naval Air Station is now Brunswick Landing, it's private, but all of the infrastructure that the Navy had, the 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 tanks of firefighting foam, the you know, the firefighting systems that were designed for planes, you know, large planes that have had things that blew up on them, um, are now, you know, kind of still there, um, uh, now under private ownership unchanged from when the Navy signed over, you know, the facilities uh, for civil aviation, which is kind of overkill. Now, they're no longer practicing with this stuff like they used to, um, but um, every hangar in, in, um, on the, on the, in Brunswick Landing, which is managed by a sort of state agency, uh, Midcoast Redevelopment Authority, um, <clears throat> Uh, they, uh, the civilian managers don't have the technical equipment or the money to manage uh, the PFAS containing firefighting foam concentrate that is currently on these former bases. And so if you look at the, what's found in the water, Ed's and, and Martha's sampling at the north end of the base toward the Androscoggin River, the dominant PFAS species is 6,2-FDS, um, which is the component of ansolite, which is a more modern uh, firefighting foam concentrate mm -hmm. with, with you know, fluorine-containing things that are more bio uh, biodegradable. Um, there is one, tang uh, one hangar remaining on the southern end of the base where there is still a, you know, very large tank full of um, 3M light water, which is PFOS, PFOS based, and the dominant um, PFAS species that you see in the water and in the um, mussels on the south end is PFOS. The dominant thing uh, that you see on the north end is the newer stuff. So what that means is that there's leakage and spillage still going on, but the people managing this stuff don't have the resources or the money to, to take care of it. So really what the Navy should be doing is getting rid of all of this stuff that they gave over to the civilians over the course of every BRAC program, you know, across the country. Because, you know, the, the, if you, if, if the tank ruptures or fitting ruptures in, in, you know, any of these tanks, particularly the one with um, uh, the 3M light water PFOS based stuff, you're going to have a major pollution incident because the parts per trillion thing is such a small unit of concentration. So imagine what a, you know, say a thousand liters would do if, you know, if it, you know, pour, poured into Hartsville Cove or whatever. Unfortunately, when you when you raise that, you know they just they don't have money, um, and they don't really. I don't think DEP or anybody else understands what's at stake here, you know. And so for Maine, the whole PFOS thing now currently is really about old ladies and cows in Fairfield. Yeah, yeah that's what gets Mainers going. <clears throat> 
not not this abstract well you know you can you know so anyway that's that's all i wanted to say but i'd like to thank martha and ed for you know going through tick ridden um you know undergrowth to get these samples which are very important which incidentally show an increasing concentration of these in in the surface waters over the last seven years there's no question about that so anyway i'm done <laughs> thanks thanks david i'll just respond real quickly you know mid coast uh redevelopment authority is um uh, a victim uh, in all of this. Um, they haven't really done anything wrong. Um, and there are players like that across the country, but not just in the United States, but around the world. And um, the um, United States um, military has executed status of forces agreements. We call them SOFAs uh, around the world, especially you know with the NATO bases. And they were executed in 1951. And uh, basically they say, uh, Hey, when we're done with it, um, you know, um, host country, you pay us for the improvements uh, minus the environmental degradation. They didn't factor in you know, forever chemicals. And so, you know, we have this at play um, worldwide and, and it's, it's the same thing. You, you can't get a FOIA from these people anymore. Documents are missing all over the, the world. We, we, we are in the dark. And we're not just talking about PFAS, we're talking about dieldrin and trichloroethylene and benzene and PCBs and mercury. They're contaminating the planet and they are not being upfront or forthright about it. And so, you know, and, and their trump card is that they can point to somebody like me and say, well, you hate America. You know, my dad, a couple brothers served. You know, I, I, I love my country as much as those guys. You know, it shouldn't be you know, folks like us on the defense, you know, we're just trying to get them to do the right thing. Damn. That's the impact you had on me there, David. <laughs> Pat, there's a question on the side there about the effects on wildlife and fish in particular, since you focused on fish, is there, is there much data on, on that? Uh, data on the, uh, impact on the fish themselves? Yeah, PFAS. PFAS yeah, I, I mean, it's strikingly little that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, so you would think that there'd be more. Um, and same with the deer. Uh, you know, how many times have you read articles about the deer and how, you know, the venison is poisoned, but what about the deer? So I, I, I don't know. I mean, I have, you know how you can, you could do Google alerts, you know, and then you can put deer and, right. and uh, PFAS. Or, and so I've got about, you know, two dozen of those, which, uh, you know, f f gives me a tremendous amount of information. You know, I, 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 I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I mean, we need more research, right? Yeah, I'm going to share my screen for a second, Pat, and just show folks um, see if it works here. Uh, no, I can't. Uh, let me see if I can do it here. Do you do you see the fish consumption advisory here or not? No. Am I still sharing my screen? No, you're not. No one. Is. Okay. All right. So, so yeah, just my document stuff coming up. But I, I just you know Googled you know the main fish consumption advisories, and I'll I'll just tell you the focus is still on mercury and dioxin. PCBs, the, uh, they have a section on PFAS here, safe eating guidelines, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven specific areas where they say, do not eat any fish from these waters or no more than, you know, a few fish meals per year of any fish species. So it's really, really limited um, what, um, what we've, um, you know, what the state is doing. Um, right, right, right. Well, Kentucky um, uh, just two months ago uh, basically uh, put a, a PFAS advisory in effect for the state, but they said, well, hey, wherever there's a, uh, uh, a mercury advisory, there's a PFAS advisory. So we'll just go by the mercury. Yeah. And well, that really and that's not responsible. Me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not rocket science. You, you know, you just put a circle around the the fish that are caught near the outfalls of sewer 
treatment plants and military burn sites and a few other places where we know. So, so keeping in mind that we have about 100,000 chemicals, I think is, is, is the number, as I recall, that are out there, and only, I want to say, 10% have been looked at for toxicity, and then a subset of that for, for cancer. Uh, is, this sort of, is this the same thing we're seeing with the, the whole PFAS thing? No one's really looking at them? I think so. I mean, uh, what about PFHXS? Or PFHPE, right? Or PF. There, there, there's so many. It's just amazing how complex it is. Some of them go after your liver. Some of them go after your kidney. Some of them go after your cognitive abilities. Some of them go after your progeny. Um, it's, it's just, it's just horrendous. Uh, but I hope, hope we can do. Um, I, I, I have to salute the state of Maine. Uh, you know, I, I, my wife uh, is, uh, her, her family is from Augusta. So uh, Leclerc, you know, French from Augusta. And, and um, so I, I've um, gotten to know the state pretty well for the last 40 years, you know, and uh, I love Maine. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not Southern Maryland. It's not the South. It's not Virginia. You, know, you get out in the country in Maine and just seems to be a higher order of human being. I know that's a vast generalization, but it's not surprising that Maine leads the country uh, in setting these fish advisories for PFAS. Whereas Maryland's attitude is, well, I ain't nobody, nobody eating them fish a long time. Ain't nothing ever happened. Everybody ain't going to hurt you. Well, <clears throat> give Maine some, <clears throat> some credit for after, <laughs> after, after pushing a sludge spreading for so long and, and, you know, basically people getting paid to take it uh, for years as, you know, because landfills were so controversial since all the PFAS publicity has happened, there is no more sludge spreading in Maine. And that, was a, that was a fairly quick response. It was brilliant. Yeah. It was brilliant. It was also the focus of lots of discussions around the world, around the country. Uh -huh. uh, and, and for folks that don't know, you could go on to, uh, you know, Facebook and you can, uh, you can Google PFAS and there are a couple of them out there. Uh, there's a PFAS coalition. There's now need our water now. Um, and then there are a couple of list serves that you might want to look at. One is the Sierra clubs uh, conversation uh, list serve on, on all PFAS. Um, and then Lenny Siegel is with CPEO. Darn if I can remember what it stands for, but that's another incredible list that just pumps out tremendous information from lots of scientists and activists around the country, trading notes. Um, so uh, I get a lot of my information from those Google alerts and, and, um, and from, these, uh, from these outlets. Pat, are people that are listening welcome to contact you with any questions at all? Or are you buried? Yeah. I mean, do you, want to, do you want to let people know how to do that? Hell yeah. Uh, P. Elder at militarypoisons.org. It's P. E. L. D. E. R. at militarypoisons.org. Um, I think uh, um, you know, if you talk to um, you know to, to Martha and Ed, um, they'll, they'll tell you that uh, you do a lot of good. Uh, and uh, there are test kits that are available from this group called Cyclopure, which has um, five you know contracts with DoD now. It's not an EPA certified test, but doggone it. Uh, we have tested it and we have compared it to what, four or five other testing outfits and found it to be extremely reliable. And I've used it, uh, uh, gosh, uh, more than a more than hundred different locations at um, a couple dozen military bases up and down the East Coast and uh, just challenging the authorities, but it has proven to be an effective line of, of activism. So, you know, if you're in a remote area in Maine and, and you know where the wastewater treatment plant is, you can get out there with a the kayak and take a sample of the water where the outfall is and, um, you know, send it to your local newspaper or write a letter to the editor to get it going. That's, yeah. it's, it's, it's worked. Great. Well, Pat, you're a real hero for doing this and we really appreciate that. And uh, um, it's, it's hard work as, as a lot of us know. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, you know anybody with a lot of money there, Ed? <laughs> well, what do you, you got need? Any money? 
What do you need? What do you need? Well, for? we need it for for testing. I mean, for, testing for you know, we there there are oysters that people are eating right now in restaurants yeah. in South Florida that have five hundred thousand parts per trillion in oysters. For God's sake. Yeah. Well, I just uh, I, I raised giant pumpkins. I just sold them to one of the biggest oyster bars in Portland tonight before the before we had the presentation. Uh, and it's like, yeah, Maine is pushing oysters like crazy. Mussels are great like crazy and. I don't know that we're doing any testing of those shellfish. No, no, no. I mean, I tested the water in Delray Beach, uh, uh, Florida, at my brother's place. And this is a nice place on the intercoastal. We're talking one and a half million for this condo. And um, the water had 695 parts per trillion of mostly PFOS in the drinking water mm -hmm. in a wealthy community. Mm -hmm. And they don't give a damn. And even though it's way above... EPA levels, especially now with the, at 0.02. And the, you know, the reaction among people down there is, well, you know, we, we, we don't, we don't drink tap water. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of press lately about um, seaweed. Do we know what plants are taking up from this? Plants like seaweed, you know, great car carbon sink, but also as a food source. Uh, and, and there's a lot of growth in that industry in Maine. People harvesting rockweed and other seaweeds. Yeah, yeah. Do you know anything about PFAS content in? Uh, yeah, I think that there was some study in Hinoko in Okinawa, uh, but um, I don't know anything more than that. Mm -hmm. Not going to um, bioaccumulate so much like it would in a, in a predator fish, obviously. But yeah, it sounds like it would be more the uh, you know the bottom feeders than it would be yeah. the you know the the uh, predators, but. Yeah. Hey man, I'm clueless. You know, I, I don't I don't have a degree in the sciences. I have a master's in government and I've plugged everything in, you know, to my trained brain, you know, uh, the last five years. And um, so when I get to scientific questions, I've got a couple of folks, including you, that I can ask, you know. So uh, yeah. Well, I see stuff. David David and Martha plugged the, the recent uh, series of articles by uh, Marina uh, Scheffler, the main monitor there, which are really good. And uh, Martha's provided the link there. You can just Google it too, main monitor. Yeah. That's yeah, no, that was a great, great story. I guess last week, but way to go, Martha. Darn it. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's what it takes over and over and over again and slowly. But again, you know, you're in Maine, you know, you're not in Maryland. So the average fellow is more likely to go, well, damn, maybe there's something to this instead yeah. of the average guy down here, he guys. This is ridiculous. These liberals, or I think we got more more press on, on PFAS and deer meat up here than, uh, than fish. Yeah, we I I had a uh, a member of uh, you know third in line at the Maryland Department of the Environment at a restoration advisory board meeting uh, at the Patuxent River Naval Air Station last year say that uh, um, uh, deer is not a problem because a lot of the water down here is brackish and so. Well, you know, deer don't drink brackish water, so we don't have to worry about PFAS in the deer meat. <laughs> this is the state of Maryland. Yeah, well, ours is coming David, from... David, David, David. So I, I want to say something that's reassuring. Um, and that is that uh, as a scientist, and as an environmental scientist who's, you know, I started doing this stuff in 1970. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, pollutants come and pollutants go. And when a, um, for a long time, everybody was freaked out about oil spills um, and, you know, uh, which are biodegradable. So, you know, there are other things, tributyl tin, which was Andy Fallon, Fallon paint, um, you know, sort of rose and fell, BPA. All these things, and what happens in, in 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 the world of science, and it's happening here with PFAS, is that um, uh, a lot of very talented uh, scientists, environmental scientists, you know, you know, hop on this stuff to study. And so, as with you know, like um, uh, aromatic hydrocarbons, you know, <clears throat> a lot of effort went into mapping out the fate and the distribution. And the you know the bioconcentration in organisms and so forth, and sort of understand you know and, and developed an understanding of the pathways. With PFAS, we're really only at the beginning of doing this uh, because 
it's it it, it it's kind of came up so quickly and i remember in 19, 2015 you know in in maybe uh you know thought well you know they're almost at the end of the restoration program at the naval air station then pfas you know blew all that you know that you know the the the, the light at the end of the tunnel wasn't the end of the tunnel it was a train you know <laughs> coming their way and so um i think that what you'll see, and, and it's already happening, there's this uh, very talented guy up in at Bigelow Labs in Booth Bay who has a Sea Grant uh, three-year uh, program to look at, you know, um, uh, 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 PFAS in uh, uh, marine species and estuarine species up and down the coast, and, and Harpswell Cove and Mirror Creek is one of them. And, and 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 again, trying to understand, you know, the, the uptake and the distribution between different trophic levels of organisms, and and so, you know, three or four years from now, I think we're going to have a much better understanding. And in the meantime, EPA has put, you know, certain PFAS on the circle list, which is a big deal. Because now nobody can kind of weasel out about, oh, we can't do anything about it because it's not a hazardous substance. Well, you know, that, that, that's a game changer. So, you know, three years from now, you, I think we're going to be, we're going to know a lot more. You know, there's going to be you know, probably a lot of bad news. But at least McDonald's isn't using PFAS in their hamburger wrappers <laughs> anymore. What it takes. Thanks, David. Are we done, Ed? I think I think if no one else wants to get their hand up quickly or say something, we're done. Yeah, you know? we're we're over time a little bit, but it's good. Great, great talk. Thank you, David. Yeah, too. yeah, it was good. It was very fluid. Thank you so much. So thanks again, and hope we see folks uh, November 9th. Um, we'll talk about shad and the problems in getting over the Brunswick Dam and relicensing the Brunswick Topsom Dam. So thanks, Pat. <laughs>